Hello everyone, so good to have you back at House of Refuge Church, where Jesus is the only way. Amen. Let's go to Lord in prayer, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Even though it's raining outside, we need that rain. It's a day you were made, and Lord, we want you to be glorified this day. So help us, Father, to, to show the love of Christ in this day, in Jesus' name. I'm Pastor James Jeffries. I have a kind of a strange title for you this, this morning, but let's go to it. I was in a department store and up by the counter, and I was. this is what the cashier said. She said, sir, are you ready to check out? I don't know if you've ever heard that from a cashier before. She might have said, ma'am, or, you know, and, uh, sir, are you ready to check out? And this thought came to me at that time. Am I ready to check out? Of course, I said, yeah, and I checked out, but I'm talking about checking out of this life. Are we ready to check out? Do we think about this? You know, death is, is not what people want to think about. With this pandemic that hit, everybody is freaking out. They're afraid they're going to get it, afraid they're going to die. And, you know, and, and my response in my spirit after this, this lady said this to me was, no, I'm not ready. You know, and it's okay to not be ready, but it's not good to not be ready because you're living a sinful life, you know, you have sin in your life, you're doing things you shouldn't be doing, and you haven't repented. We should always, as Christians, be living in a repentive mode because we're always going to mess up. As long as we're in this carnal flesh body, we're going to say wrong things, we're going to do wrong things, we're going to lust after things, we're going to look at things we shouldn't look at, and there should be a Holy Spirit conviction about all these things that should cause us to repent. So we should always be in a repentive mode. We should always be ready if today is the day. You know, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't say, I'm not ready because I haven't repented. Well, this should be all the time. Anytime you've done something wrong, there should be a conviction. We was at a restaurant with our, with our, um, our children, and I was talking to my, my son-in-law, and I told him what this title was going to be. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not ready. And I said, well, I know you're not ready. You know, you're 30 years old. The two two sons, three and five, that you're raising. I mean, you're working, you, you're living the family life, and your reason for saying you're not ready has nothing to do with sin. It just has to do with where you're living at in this life. And I understand that. <clears throat> when we get to the last scripture, I'm, I got something in that last scripture that we need to pay attention to. But we're going to look at some things this morning. Because, you see... Some people are actually ready to go. I remember going to talk to a, um, an elderly man in the hospital. He was like 94, I believe. And I went into his room, and I got talking to him. He was a born-again believer, loving the Lord. And I walked in, and I said, uh, Mr. Phillips, I said, you know, uh, are you, if today is the day, are you ready? He said, he said, I am ready, and it is time for me to go. And I said, well, what makes you say that? And he said, you know, my, my organs are shutting down physically. I, I just know that it's just time. And he said, and I'm not afraid, and I'm ready. And uh, made my peace with the Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior. You know, so he reached a place in his life that he wasn't, he wasn't being much of a witness anymore in his life because, because his, you know, people that he was uh, always coming to see him, he wasn't able to go see them. His, now physically he was in the hospital and he went home to be with Jesus that day, that afternoon. He went home to be with the Lord and I did his funeral a few days later. You know, but he knew, he knew he was ready and the timing of his death. Now, he couldn't have told me today I'm going home, but he knew he was ready. Now, on the other hand, like I'm 63 years old, I'll be 64 this year, I'm not ready to go yet. If the Lord says, come home, I won't go to heaven and argue with God because it's, it's, it's awesome. Why, why would I do that, you know? But I'm not ready. And I'm going to show you some scriptures that, that we should be rejoicing in and, and a reason why, as Christians, there's a feeling of not being ready. But like I said before, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but it has nothing to do with not being right with God. Those sinners out there in the world, 
they got to get right with God because if they die today, they're going to go to hell. But we as believers have already repented of our sins and, and then we repent of any new ones. So we should be ready at all times. So let's look at some things. Here in Matthew 24, Jesus said, now he was talking about other things when he made this statement. And, but watch what he said. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. So inside of the Father's being, in his, his mind, his intelligence, he knows. He knows when everything that's going to happen on this earth is going to happen. I believe Jesus knows that now, but he didn't know when he was on the earth. You see, and even the angels, they don't know. They can see, they probably see better than we do, of things happening on the earth. And, uh, but this, this covers all the bases, including the day that you will finally cross over to that other side. You know, so the question still stands. Are you ready to check out? No, I'm not. But if it was my day, I would be. Because I am ready to be with the Lord at any time. Here in Ecclesiastes 3, it says, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. You know, we go through seasons in life. Right now we're in winter time and my heart is already excited about springtime coming. You know, to see all the beauty right now, the trees are missing their leaves and uh, the weeds are, and the grass is all dead and, and uh, you know, it's not really pleasant out there. It's really the, the look of death over everything. Even though the trees are still alive, the grass is alive, everything's still alive, but it's just looking like death out there. But in the, on the inside of me is springtime. And you know that springtime should never leave us. But there are seasons. We go into spring where everything starts coming alive and the, the bees are out, the birds. And it's just, to me, man, that's like the, the most exciting time of the whole year. I love springtime. The fish are swimming and you could feed them and, and everything is really good. It starts to really look nice. You want to go on vacations, you want to see things. Then you go in the summer, which over here gets hot, and you know it gets to be kind of, kind of hard to live at times, cutting grass and stuff like that. But it's still a good time. But then comes fall. You know that you're heading into a time of death, which is winter time, and you watch the leaves change and then they fall. And next thing you know, it's snowing in some places. It's cold. It stays cold for a long time. So the seasons in life. And I believe that, looking at this, you know, to everything there was a season and a time to every activity under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. So there's a time when there's springtime and things are being reborn and the seeds are germinating. But then there's winter time when it's a time to die. It doesn't mean it's a bad time. It's just a time when everything goes dormant and everything is just looking like death. Well, in the Christianity, we don't die, you see. We, it might look like we've died. They might have a funeral and show your dead body in a coffin. Might be a, you know, a time when a person gets really old and, and feeble and so forth and, and their body's showing the signs that they're closer to death than ever before. But we do not die. Like I said, winter it looks like death, but then here comes that one little flower that blooms in the middle of the winter. All of a sudden here comes the birds coming at your, your bird feeders in the yard. And you see, and, and that just tells you there's life. A person might look like they're ready to die, but they're not going to die if they know the Lord. They step right on out of this body and right into new life. That's awesome. So you see, we got to get that concept of dying out of our heads. You know, it's a real problem with people because, you know, death is so permanent. And the Bible doesn't even refer to us as, as uh, dying. He said he's not the God of the dead, but he's a God of the living. It's a Greek word, it's a word quick, which means to be alive, to have understanding. You know, you can have this, you can be alive in this physical body, but your mind has you plugged out and, and, and hooked into death. You know, you could be in poverty, you could be sickly all the time. You can have aches and pains all through your body. So even though you're alive, 
you could still be walking in that that atmosphere of death like winter time you're alive but there's not there's not many flowers there's not many leaves on your branches you know the Bible teaches us that Jesus is the vine and we're the branches we're supposed to be bearing fruit the Bible tells us in Psalms 1 that we are trees planted by the river and we bring forth our fruit in its season. So, you know, your trees could all, your, your body and who you are can always be like winter time. You're alive, but there's no leaves, there's no fruit. You're just always in a dormant state of mind. So you see, we could have the mindset of death in our lives all the time. But let me, I'm going to show you some scriptures. How should a Christian be? How should we, and what should we be thinking about? You know, we're not going to die. So what, how should we treat death? The world out there is looking. I got grandchildren coming up. They saw my mom and my dad in the coffin. And, you know, they were young when they saw it, especially when my father died back in, in 2013. And my, uh, my youngest one asked me later, he said, Papa? Is your dad in heaven? And I said, yeah. And he was only about six at that time. You know, and, and it's just a, a time of rejoicing when I could talk to my grandchildren about heaven and that people that know the Lord don't die. Sure, I said, you're looking at his house, you see? He used to live in that body. Now he's, he's up in heaven with a new body, and it's young. My dad died at 83, I think he was. And now he's in a young body. And he's living in heaven because he received the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior. And explaining this to my, my grandson was such a joy. Because you see, my dad is not dead. He's alive. And he will be living forevermore because of his relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's look at some things. See, we see here in the scripture there's a time to be born a time to die. You know, you're going to die. But that's only if you're born again. It's only your body. It's only this house we live in. This, this tent, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5. All Christians should be walking in peace. Now, you know, if you're born again, that means you have the spirit of the living God inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit of truth who's guiding you and leading you into all truth. You see, you're not here to just have a house, drive a nice car, raise your kids, um, be able to go out and eat the restaurants, go on vacation whenever you want, buy new clothes. Uh, you know, you're not here for all of that stuff. If, you know, these things are like fringe benefits to people's lives, because not everybody can enjoy life in that way. You know, we're here, we're here to tell people through our life that we live by the words of our mouth, by the actions of our being, we're here to guide people into that truth because that's where the Spirit's guiding us in the truth. So we are to guide people in that truth by the life that we live. You know, we're not supposed to be drunkards and drug addicts and, and lustful people. You see, we're supposed to show people that there's, there's a greater joy and fulfillment inside of us. You see, that's the life we're supposed to be living. And so we're supposed to be walking in that peace, that peace to know that Whatever happens to me and how I die in this life physically, that I died with the peace of the Lord. You know, when the day comes and some ministers praying over or, or doing my funeral, I don't want some sad thing. I want some rejoicing. I want people I want him to fire up those people that are listening. And I want them I want that minister to say, Hey, you know, Jim Jeffries loved the Lord. He lived, he lived for, right now, it's 41 years in the Lord. Every day of his life was revolving around Christ. He loved his family, loved his grandkids, he loved, he loved the people in his church. But he always had his heart set on going home and being with the Lord because he loved the Lord more than anyone and anything on this earth. And so I don't want it to be a sad occasion. Oh my God, he's died and people crying. Well. They're going to cry because I'm not going to be here with them anymore because I have a good relationship with these people, my family. But they know, you see, I want them to have, I want, the, I want that minister to make them laugh and, and, you know, and say, man, I can see, I can see Pastor Jim up in heaven. God says, come here, and he gives me a big pond. 
that, he, that he'll have koi in there and, and he'll have honeybees and, and, and enjoy flowers and plants and everything that he enjoyed here. And he's, he's enjoying all of that wonderful stuff that he loved here on the earth. And then one day, my loved ones will come with me. They'll come up into heaven and then I'll show them around. What a joy to get out of this stinking life. But right now we got to take the love and the joy in us and create a season of hope, a season of re renewing. Springtime every day, 365 plus one on leap year, every day, springtime, S smelling the new flowers, seeing the, the fields covered in beautiful flowers, the honeybees out collecting their nectar and their pollen, every day a joy. So let's understand what this means. You know, Christians should be walking in peace. Walking in peace. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6, So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. You know, right here we see in the scripture that as long as I'm in this body, I'm not at home with the Lord. Because I have a new body in heaven like unto his and I will be walking with him and talking with him and enjoying the glories of God. So let me explain something to you about walking in peace about the scripture. See, while I'm in this body, in sound inside of this body is my spirit. And the spirit is really me. That's me. I'm a spirit being and so are you. This body is just a house. It's just a tent. It's just a place in which we live. We need to take care of this body the best we can. You know, if I'm going to live to be 83 like my dad, I want to be able to walk and, and be able to enjoy life. And when I start to lose that, it's time to go. That's how I feel about it. Quality of life. I want to be able to enjoy some things with my grandsons and enjoy my children and, and enjoy my friends. You know, I want to be able to preach with enthusiasm and with joy. I want to, I want to have a, a great service in this church with happiness, joy, and peace. You see, I don't want to be the one that's beat down, always thinking about negative things. No. While I'm in this body, I'm absent from the Lord. I'm not with the Lord. So, the Lord lives in me. So I got to get that, that feeling of joy and happiness on the outside of me so people can crave that and want it. You know, I don't want people lusting over what I have or anything, but when it comes to having the joy of the Lord, I want them to crave it and covet it. I want them to want it as much as they want life itself. You see, that's how we should be living. We should be trying to get people excited about that time when we'll live with the Lord. And the only way you're going to have that joy of living with the Lord is to live with Him now. Do you understand? To be living with the Lord right now is the only way in which we can show people, people, the greatest joy is knowing that one day I'm going to be living for an eternal life with my Savior who died on the cross for me. So while I'm in this body, I'm absent from the Lord, I'm not with the Lord, but the Lord is with me and I have to, I have to let him out. I have to let them see in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of storms of life, to be able to rejoice, to be able to have peace and walk in that peace. You know, whether I'm here in this body or in the Lord, I don't want to step into heaven and, and then I get happy. I want to be happy now knowing that one day. You know, the early church didn't worry about stuff on this planet. They were ready for the Lord to come. They thought he was coming at any day. They had a love for his returning. And what happened? We got more stuff now than they had. And so now we want to like, well, I want to enjoy my new boat. I want to, I want to just do something and paint my house. I want, to, I want to just live comfortable. I want to get that new car I've been looking for. And I was like, come on. Let's, let's live for Jesus. Walk in that peace. So while I'm in this body, I'm going to do my best to demonstrate heaven. To demonstrate this joy that is in me. Here in 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Two scriptures after the one I just read. And it says, yes, we are fully confident that we would rather be away from these earthly bodies 
but then we will be at home with the Lord. So the idea is that while we're here in this body, let's demonstrate, you know, heaven. Let's demonstrate that joy. But then come to this understanding. These bodies are aging. There's pains in our bodies. We're going through sicknesses. You know, this year, Julie and I got hit with that COVID virus. It was not fun. You know, and there's sicknesses out there all the time. If that, I haven't been sick in like so many years. So to be sick just reminded me how weak and, and frail these bodies are. But in the midst of that, I still serve the Lord. Came to a place where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't write my devotions anymore. I couldn't, I didn't even preach that weekend on video because I, was, I had 102 fever. But I was rejoicing in the Lord. I was sitting at home. And just worshiping him. I was reading my Bible. I was thinking on heavenly things. So if anybody would have dropped in on me, they would have heard me glorify the Lord. They would not have heard me say, oh, I'm so sick. You know, I cried out to him. I talked to him. I worshiped him. And I did what I could while I had that fever. About five days of having, having that fever broken. And then my strength has been coming back. But let me tell you something, people. And throughout that whole time, my whole attitude about God did not change. There wasn't a time throughout my whole Christian walk that I, that I ever got just mad at God because he didn't do what I wanted him to do. You know, because the Lord is my Savior, my King, who died for me. He died for you. Let's have that truth in us that we are longing for that new body. But I'm not ready yet. And I know that many of you are not. Also, Romans 8, 38. <clears throat> and I am confident that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. You see, people, we walk in peace and the truth about this body dying should not even bother us. Let me tell you something right now. If you're afraid to die, if you're afraid about, you know, this body dying, then you know what? This scripture doesn't make much sense to you. Because I want to tell you right now, nothing can stop his love. He loves you incredibly. He loves you with his death on the cross. He loves you with everything that he is. He loves you in a way that you can't even begin to imagine. The greatest love you have here is like hate. You know, one scripture is a little strange because it says that, that we should love him and we should hate our loved ones. It does, that word hate is an English term, but what it really means is comparison. My love for him should be greater than any love here on this earth. And it is greater. His love for us <clears throat> is beyond comprehension to us. I mean, we haven't even loved fully. I mean, we, we, we uh, have children and we hug on them and we kiss them and we carry them and we tickle them and we play around with them and we want the best for them. And that is so far short of God's love for us. People, God, love, He loves you so much. You know, if, if it was possible on this earth, and when I say you know, it, everything is possible with God, but He would make us all billionaires. But... That would tend in many cases to draw you away from God. You see, sometimes it's better off not to have money than to have it and have it draw you away. See, God, is, God has you right where he needs to have you so that you won't drift away from him. People, you don't want to drift away from God's love. God has always met my need, even, even when I don't have money. He always meets my need. But see, it's not about that. No matter where I find myself in life like this, even being attacked by demons, even, even you know, having bad things going on, even being sick, I rejoice in Christ my Savior. And if it's time to go, I'll step right out of this body and into glory with peace and joy in my heart. I've repented of my sins and I continue to repent when I fail. So, I'm ready. Are you? Psalms 116, verse 15. Precious in, in the sight of the Lord 
is the death of his saints. Oh my goodness. Precious in the sight of the Lord. The psalmist is, is telling us that God is, is like he's longing for that day. In the meantime, he wants us to do what, what he wants us to do, to be a witness. And hear well done when we get there. But it's like God, he's longing for that day that the, the veil that's over our eyes where we can't see him will be removed. And we will be looking at him face to face. Man, that's exciting to me. But he, I can't even imagine how excited that is to God when finally the, the veil can be removed of this life and you're looking at Jesus right in his eyes and he's just you, you, love is not a word love is an experience when his love begins to just overwhelm you just come over you and clothe you people say that have died and come back they said the love was like on this they just want to go home. They just don't want to be here. They want to go back to that love. You see, we don't understand that. I love the affection my wife gives me and my kids. And that's, that's a joy, but it doesn't even compare. But how precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Wow. God's looking forward to that day when he gets to look into your eyes. Amen. Philippians 3 says, now, listen to what Paul writes to the Philippians. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Look at what he's saying here to the, to the Philippians. That one day he's going to transform us and change us. And on this earth we might call it death because your physical body dies. But it's a transforming by God. The eager waiting for his return. I might not be alive on this earth when he does actually return. But the return I look at here is that when I return to him. And then... Everything will be under his control. You won't sin no more. There'll be no more sickness, no more diseases, no more trials, no more tests. Oh my goodness. Everything will be under his control. What an awesome day, you know. We are citizens of heaven. I mean, we live here on this earth like we citizens here. I've seen Christians lose it and some probably even left the Lord because of the things they're saying because of the election. Oh my people. This is about King Jesus, not President whoever. Understand, we're citizens of heaven. God sits upon his throne. He'll never get voted out. He's always a God of love and compassion and mercy. And one day we will live in the midst of that for eternity, people. But you're living in it right now. You just got to set your affections on it. Philippians 1, 21 through 23 says, For to me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. Now this is an interesting scripture, because I think this, this sums up my message this morning. That... We should have this excitement and joy to go home and be with the Lord. But we know, we know it is far better. You see, it's far better to be living here in Christ. To be able to teach people and to show people and to help people along. You know, as Paul taught that in, in the King James it says he's in a straight betwixt two. He's between two decisions. He said, it's far better to be here to be teaching you, he said, to teach the church. But I would much rather be in heaven. You see, people, having a desire to be in heaven is not like, I just want to die because this world is terrible. Having a desire to be in heaven, man, Christians need to have that desire. Your loved ones need to see that in you. Your, your, 
your children, your grandkids, they need to see that excitement. You know, when I first got saved, I was talking that way, and my dad said, you, so you want to die? You know, you're married? You haven't had kids yet? I mean, he was jumping on my car. I said, no, Dad, you don't understand. Of course I want to stay here, and, and, and I want to have some children, and I want to, you know, raise them, and then whatever God allows. But, but man, I fell in love with Jesus Christ. I want to be in heaven. Until that time, I want to show that joy to the people that are around me. I want people to see that I'm excited about going home to heaven one day. I'm excited about, about well, let's don't use the term, but heh, I'm excited about dying. I'm not afraid of that. Because I know that I'm, it's just a transforming, a stepping into glory. And I know that because I love my family so much, they're going to cry. Because they won't have me around no more. You know? So I understand that. And I know that I need to be here for as long as I can. Of sound mind. Teaching the word. But living that joy before them. Now I'll just ask you this question and then I'll close. Do the people around you see that you're more excited about going to heaven than you are about living in this earth? The people around you, they, do they come to you and question you about heaven and so forth because you've been, you've been so excited about it, they can, they can feel that excitement? Are you living in such a way that creates curiosity from your children and your grandkids? Or do they think like you've lost your mind or you're just goofy or whatever because of your relationship? You see, it's, it's not a conversation unless they talk to you about it. But it's a lifestyle. When they say, why are you laughing all the time? Why do you smile? And then you, well, because I know that one day I'm going to heaven. Oh, there you go again with all that Jesus stuff. You ask me, I'm telling you. Live in such a way. Make sure they know why you're happy. Make sure they know why you're content. Make sure they understand that. And then just be quiet and live the life before them. After three years of living that life before my dad, he told me, what you have is real. And he wanted to know this Jesus that I have. So it took time. Let them see. Let them see the salvation of the Lord that is in you and upon you. Listen, people, you're here to be a light, to be a demonstration of this truth. You know, Jesus wants to radiate out from you like the light does from a light bulb. Let him just fill you with that joy and that happiness. Close your eyes and just worship and praise. Now let's pray together. Father, I pray right now, first off, I pray for your people. That they won't be so fearful about dying. Lord, that they will be excited about going home to be with you. Being patient on the inside until that day. But the joy just, just radiating from them. Lord, we're here to be a witness in the light. What better way is to have that joy and that happiness. Even with the pains and agonies of living in this life, there's still the joy of the Lord. So, Father, I pray for the body of Christ. I pray right now that you would just flood over us with the truth of your joy and your presence. That we will have an excitement about heaven and the joy about seeing you face to face. So I lift up your people today. In Jesus' name, amen.